The problem with leadership and the leadership voyage is a lot of people don't think they deserve to be on it. How many of you, by show of hands, are completely and totally comfortable with the title of leader? It's always a front row person because they don't know. <laughs> no, here's this, because you don't realize no one behind you put, didn't put their like, hand up. You know, the front row puts their hand up and without any idea that, oh crap, and the, or the back row starts to feel bad on behalf of the room and they slowly raise their hand. For what it's worth, ultimately, that happens every time. Like I've asked the question to a thousand different audiences, different ages, different industries, different backgrounds, less than 1% of the time. Do I get more than half the people in the room willing to raise their hands? That's a problem because it means most of the people who work with you and work for you are not comfortable calling themselves leaders. And that's a problem because in an organization, the more people at every level who are comfortable with the concept of themselves as a leader, the better decisions are made, the faster decisions are made, and the more creative the decisions are when they are made. So we need to deal with this fact that leadership for most people is something they are not comfortable with. And it's because of how we taught it to you. Like I'm from the education system, and if you want people to understand a new concept as you teach it to them, especially young, what we do is we give examples of the concept. That's how we teach anything new. And the problem is whatever example you're given first to explain a new concept, not only does it shape how you think about it for the rest of your life, it limits how you think about it for the rest of your life. And so if you think back to how you were taught about the concept of leader, what were the first examples you were given? And a lot of you, can't remember because so many ideologies, so many beliefs that exist strongly within us, we cannot trace back to their root. They've always just been the way we've thought. And if you think about it, I will tell you this, I bet you they were all giants. They were presidents and they were scientific groundbreakers, they were people who conquered empires, and the vast majority were also probably straight white men. And we're still doing it. We're still telling kids, look at Warren Buffett invest, look at Steve Jobs innovate, look at Mark Zuckerberg slowly destroy us all. <laughs> and look, there is nothing wrong with celebrating successful people. The problem is if those are the only examples we use to teach what a leader is, it causes most people to devalue the leadership that we demonstrate every day. And we start to let moments of leadership pass us by. We do not let ourselves feel good about them. We do not let ourselves take credit for them. Now the problem is on a psychological level, the stuff that makes you feel good when you do it is the stuff that you are driven to do every day. If it feels good, you do it more often. Carbohydrates. <laughs> so when we let moments of leadership pass by without recognizing and celebrating them as leadership, and when I say moments of leadership, I wanna be very clear on something. Moments of leadership to me are moments of powerful interpersonal impact, individual moments of impact. Because, ultimately, that power is the only power on the planet that does not have systemic barriers between that power and most of the people on the planet. Almost every source of power on Earth is not available to most people on Earth. But the ability to create moments of interpersonal impact, by that I mean kindness, empathy, forgiveness, those are the most powerful things we do. And that is leadership. The thing is we don't call it leadership, what we do is we throw it into a basket and we call them the little things. That's a struggle. It's, we can't call them the little things. They're the most powerful things we do. And when we let those moments pass by ourselves, our colleagues, the people who work for us, and we don't call them leadership, what we're effectively doing is we're pulling leadership out of our organizations, out of our communities, out of our lives, and off the planet.